In the summer of 2020, something new is going to happen that will change the way that you are allowed to fly your drone forever. At least if you live in Europe. The European Union will be introducing a new set of rules that will apply to all EU countries. In this video, I will cover the new categories as well as uh, what will happen to your national certificate, when and how these new rules are being effectuated, and finally, what is the impact on you as a drone pilot. I do want to give a big thank you to Droner.dk, the Danish DJI distributor that has provided the, the insights for this video. Their CEO, Frederik Skyt, has made a quite an extensive article uh, about the new rules that are being introduced from a Danish perspective. The article is in Danish, but for those of you that can read Danish, you can find it in the description below. Just a heads up, this will be a long one, but don't worry, I'll break it up for you so it's easy to understand. You want to know this if you're living in Europe and want to use your drone after the new rules have been introduced. Sit tight and prepare for liftoff, but before we get to that, let's roll that intro. Welcome to another video, I'm Henrik Olsen and if you want to learn how to make better videos and do it legally with your drone, then consider subscribing and hitting the bell down there so you don't miss out on my weekly tips, tests and tutorials. The new EU rules are not to be understood as having the same rules in all EU countries. The EU laws provides general guidelines and a framework that each individual EU country should work with on a national level. An example from another world could be that it is required to have a driver's license to drive a car on a public road. It's then up to each country to make national rules on public roads like speed limits. But each country must draw up their national rules based on the general EU rules on driver's licenses. For drones, this could mean that the minimum distance for an airport could be different in Sweden and Italy. So you have to check the national law in the European country that you want to fly. The advantage is that you, for example, can get certified to fly in urban areas and transfer those rights directly to another European country. The new rules are no longer having a distinction between urban and non-urban areas, at least as uh, we used to know in Denmark. Instead, it's all about the risk and what category the level of risk of the operation fits into. The new EU rules are built around three operational categories, each with different requirements and rules in play. The three categories are called the open category, the specific category, and the certified category. The open category is considered the least risky. The specific and the certified category have higher risk level and therefore higher requirements. Most of you will fly in the open category, so this will be the primary focus of this video. There are some clear guidelines in each category, and if you can't comply with those, then you will automatically be placed in a higher risk category. The requirement of the three categories at EU level cannot be banned nationally. This means that you cannot apply for an exemption to fly in the open category without complying with the defined requirements. The open category. The open category is designed to accommodate the vast majority of drone operations performed today for both hobby and professional flying. The general rules for the open categories are don't fly over crowds. Keep minimum distances to airports and infrastructure. Having a maximum flight altitude of 120 meters. Flying within visual line of sight, also known as VLAS. With the open category, drones are divided into different weight classes. For example, if the drone weighs less than 250 grams, there are fewer requirements for you as an operator and for the procedures that you need to follow, compared to a heavier drone. The open category is divided like this. The subcategories A1, A2, A3 are linked to the risk involved over flying people. There are no requirements for flying A1 operations with the C0 drones. That could be the Mavic Mini. To fly A1 operations with a C1 drone, you must take an online course and test. This would typically be a Mavic Air. To fly A2 operations with a C2 drone, you must take a practical course and an online test. And for DJI owners, this would typically be the Mavic 2 series or the Phantom series. To fly A3 operations with a C3 drone, you need to take an online course and test. These will probably be the big drones from DJI like the Matrice and bigger models. 
Note that the different seed drone weight classes fits into an A category and they are not allowed to cross. This means that, uh, for example, you can't fly an A1 operation with a C3 drone in the open category. If you want to do that, you automatically move to the specific category where you need to apply permission from the right authorities. In the open category, it doesn't matter if you fly in urban or non-urban areas. At the same time, the requirement for overflying people is uh, greatly reduced for the lighter drones. You can freely fly over people, not crowds, but people if you have a drone that weighs less than 250 grams in the open category. And of course, comply with the general rules. You must attend an online course and test if you want to fly in the open categories with drones weighing more than 250 grams. You have to demonstrate that you have gained enough general knowledge about drones, meteorology, and emergency procedures if it all should go wrong. If you have a drone that weighs between 900 grams and 4 kilos, you are required to take a practical course and pass a test if you want to be able to overfly people. Probably similar to the one that we know from the certificates that we have today. For drones between 900 grams and 4 kilos, keeping a safe distance to people. So there you only need to attend an online course and pass an online test. If you're flying in the open category, there's a low risk for you causing harm to people, animals and things. And therefore requirements for qualifications are lower than the other two categories, the specific and the certified. I hope this is not too dry for you guys, so let's uh, grab a cup of coffee. Let's continue. The specific category. The specific category is basically everything that is not covered by the open category as you cannot apply for an exemption. These will typically be situations where you need to fly out of sight, fly drones over 4 kilo close to people, fly higher than 120 meters in case you want to fly close to airports. Typically, it will be companies with the capacity to live up to the standards of the specific category. Let's just briefly touch upon the certified category. This category is specifically intended for risky operations with drones under 25 kilos. Human transport, freight and logistics and other special purposes. The requirement for the certified category is taken from the Aviation Act under the section for helicopters. This category is not something that ordinary people will fly in, as it requires quite a big legal entity to manage all the permits that is required to fly within this category. Uh, the certified category. When will the new rules be effectuated? As it looks right now, it will all be a smooth transition. The EU rules are scheduled to be rolled out to some extent in the summer 2020, with the national drone certificate running in parallel with the new system. In the summer of 2020, the national regulations will be updated to comply with the ones from EU. From that point, it will be possible to fly according to the new EU rules. So what will happen to the National Drone Certificate? The possibility of taking the Drone Certificate stops after the summer 2020 when the national regulations have been updated, according to the latest information. When the National Drone Certificate stops, the existing Drone Certificates will be converted into similar permits in the new EU system. So this basically means that the, the rights that you have today, you will also have those or better in the new system. So what are the benefits of the new EU rules? Simple rules across Europe that should be easier to handle, at least that is the intention. If you're traveling extensively in Europe, you are saving a lot of time of money to get national approval in the country that you want to fly. It will be easier for you to figure out national constraints in each country. Since all regulations speak the same language uh, using uh, the same terminology like the open category. As a private individual, you will now be allowed to fly in urban areas, which is something that is not possible today, at least in Denmark. If you have a national certification, you are ensured a smooth transition to the new EU system, as well as the opportunity to transfer national rights to EU. So, what are the disadvantages? When EU takes control of an area, it often happens that things get pretty complicated quickly. So we probably haven't seen the last of this. New drone pilots under the regulatory framework of EU without the possibility of taking the national drone certificate 
will have to seek separate permits for items in the specific category. With drone rules moving away from the national level, we are also facing a risk that people will fly illegal without knowing because it simply gets too complicated. So this is the information that I have picked up around the, the new uh, EU drone laws that are being gradually introduced from the summer 2020. This is, a, as I mentioned in the beginning, based on some material that uh, was provided by Droner DK, um, a Danish article, as well as some studying that I have been doing myself by reading into the proposed uh, law text. But I do want to add this disclaimer that I'm by no means a drone law expert, or at least I'm not that yet. Uh, as I'm looking into to the matter. So please uh, take what you have seen in this video with a grain of salt and uh, consider it as a, a glimpse into the future that we all are going to face as a European pilots. Stuff might change up till uh, summer when it's being introduced. So uh, even though something doesn't sound very good right now and maybe something sounds good, there's not uh, the same as saying it that uh, this will eventually happen. I'm pretty sure there will be a few adjustments on the way based on hearings. By the way, did you see the video where I told you why your footage sucks? If you're curious about that, then uh, you can watch this video through this card. Or you could go for the YouTube recommended through this card. I hope you liked this video. If you did, then feel free to give it a like. If you didn't like it, feel free to press the dislike button twice. Thank you for watching and I'll be seeing you around.